All right, so here we are back at our eye again. And let's start talking about sort of the most important part. This is the part of your eye, the retina. Uh, it's the part of your brain that is in your eye. Now, here is a picture, uh, a schematic of a retina, okay? And first you'll notice there are these uh, receptors called rods and cones, and we'll talk about those in a minute. And then those receptors uh, connect to these things called horizontal and bipolar cells, which take the chemical output of the receptors and eventually turn them into stimulation for these ganglion cells, which are the first proper nerve, well, I shouldn't say proper, they're the nerve cells that actually produce uh, firing spikes that we're used to uh, for nerve cells. But when you look at this, you should look at that curvature and it should bother you a little bit, right? So here's the picture of my eye. Okay, but you see, of course, my thing is, is bent this way, and this thing is sort of bent that way. So actually, what I need to do, and I'm really proud of this, is we need to rotate that picture so this curvature here is like this curvature there, at which point you realize what comes up this way? The light, all right? The human system has what's referred to as an inverted retina, okay? And that is the light comes in and passes through all of this gunk. It passes through, there are blood vessels in here, there's nerve cells, it passes right through them, then it hits your photoreceptors, okay? And then any stray light keeps going, sort of gets absorbed. This background layer, this is called the pigment epithelium. This is actually a very black pigment in the back of your eye. So you might ask, why would you build an inverted retina? Why would you build an inverted retina? Nobody asked me, but here's some, some speculation. There are a couple of things. The reason that, that I like best is, what happens is, is that the light goes through here, and anyone that happens to hit the uh, photoreceptors right there gets absorbed, and then after that, it hits this pigment epithelium, okay? And what that means is, the pigment epithelium absorbs any stray light. So it eliminates scatter within the, within the eye. And that gives you a very sharp resolution. It reduces your ability to see at night a little bit. We'll talk about the sensitivity of rods and cones in a little bit. But it gives you this, this idea that, you know, first the, the light, whatever light gets absorbed by the uh, detectors goes into processing and everything else is absorbed and removed. It doesn't cause any disturbance. It does mean that there's a funny sort of thing that goes on. These structures produce, they're very, they're clear because they're made out of, you know, gelatinous stuff that is biological tissue. But of course, it causes little shadows, right? So if you go right past the blood vessel, it'll be actually a little bit of a shadow. So you might ask, why don't we see these shadows? Why don't we see these shadows? The human eyeball is remarkable. Anything that's perfectly stabilized on your eye, the brain just removes, okay? So that shadow stays exactly in the same place on the retina the brain just removes it. In fact, there's some cool tricks you can do by building little sta stabilization systems that will keep something projected exactly the same place on the eye, and eventually uh, you just don't see it. So anyway, so that's the inverted retina of, of the eye. 